there, and welcome to the Typing Biometrics journey. Together, we'll go through some theory and practice of that. And by the end of it, you're going to find out how you can win some limited edition swag from Typing DNA. So without further ado, let's get it started. First of all, uh, what e exactly is Typing Biometrics? So this is uh, something also known as keystroke dynamics, and it is embedded in people's behavior when they type on a keyboard. So yes, you heard that right. Uh, the way that you type is unique and it can be used for various purposes that we're going to explore further in this presentation. Now, this might sound futuristic, but it's actually, um, it dates back to World War II uh, when the military used to communicate through the Morse code. So using a methodology called uh, the fist of the sender, military intelligence were able to uh, detect the rhythm of um, the operator's uh, point um, recording the dots and the dashes and uh, they could identify ally from enemy in this context. Now since then uh, the preference for written communication grew and with it uh, the, um, the field of typing biometrics evolved. So one area uh, which is uh, the most uh, explored and developed at the moment is authentication. Uh, so using the way that you type um, in order to authenticate you. Now, by uh, at this point, I think we can all agree that passwords alone are not enough to secure your account. Uh, so I want to make a short detour to the authentication space before going into more details on typing biometrics. So in, when we talk authentication, we can basically um, split the, the different factors into three categories, knowledge, possession and biometrics. Uh, knowledge is something that you know. Uh, such as a PIN or a password um, or the security question such as what is your mother's maiden name. Um, the possession factors are something that you own, like an, uh, a phone number, an email address, a token, um, something that you could further leverage uh, that could receive kind of a one-time password or a code on it. And the third option, uh, the third category um, is biometrics. And here we can further split the, um, the factors into physiological, something that you are. Um, and here you can have the fingerprints, um, the face recognition or behavioral, something that is related to the way that you behave, such as the way that you walk, the way that you talk or the way that you type. And now if we, we were to compare um, the security aspects of them, the uh, security and UX point of view. Uh, the knowledge factors are the most user friendly because people are already uh, used to them. However, it tends to be not so secure because some, once somebody hacks your uh, your information or like finds out uh, what it is, then it's very easy to break. And let's not forget that people usually um, usually reuse, share um, the the passwords or the information to to make it easier. Now, possession uh, is a bit more secure, but it tends to be not so user friendly uh, because the devices uh, could be lost or stolen. So then imagine um, you are stranded somewhere, your phone got stolen, you're trying to contact, let's say, your uh, your bank or you're trying to send an email and then it, it sends you the SMS and uh, you cannot basically log in, authenticate because your device was initially lost or stolen. So uh, it can generate some user experience problems here. Now the third category, the biometrics, uh, are supposed to be the most secure ones. However, this could also pose some user experience issues because they might require um, kind of a heavy interaction with, uh, from, from the user side. It can also have some, prob have some problems in uh, detecting it because nothing is black or white here. This is not a one or zero response to authentication as it is in the case of the knowledge or the possessions one. And you're basically basing your uh, authentication assumption um, on a certain certainty threshold. But among all of this, uh, we believe typing biometrics to be the winner in terms of uh, two fact uh, adding two-factor authentic authentication. Um, and this um, is because, first of all, it's very secure um, because it's hard to break, it's hard to mimic. Even though somebody is next to you and sees how you, like what your password is, they cannot replicate how you type it. Um, it's also compliant uh, with the re latest regulations. So according to PSD2 uh, rules, you, typing biometrics is accepted as a second factor. 
and it's very user friendly because you don't need to do anything additional than what you're already doing, basically typing. And you can use your own device. You don't need a, another keyboard or other uh, hardware. And um, it also evolves as the user's typing behavior changes over time. So it's constantly adapted to, to the behavior and it's kept um, as updated as possible. The more that you type, then the better your profiling profi typing profile gets. Now, this, uh, this is currently being uh, heavily used into e-learning, especially since, uh, since COVID hit and uh, more and more universities and courses moved online. Also, the need to secure the, um, the courses and the certifications grew. Um, and we have various clients that reached out and they implemented typing DNA authentication in various uh, steps of the journey, being it uh, while taking the exam, also at the end, to ensure that the person who started the exam was also the same one that uh, was continually doing the exam and finished it and is the same person as the one that took the course initially. Um, we also have clients from the banking area, financial services, because I was mentioning the PSD2 regulations now require uh, the online transactions to have a second factor in place. Um, and many of them turned to, to, to typing biometrics in order to secure the, the, the transaction. Um, and the identity and access management providers could also not stay away from this opportunity. So you can now have um, typing biometrics at the click of a button, literally drag and drop in your favorite IAM widget, such as um, Forgerock or Azure ADB2C. All right, now that it's been a lot of talk, so let's see how this would actually work uh, in practice. So the first step, as with any other biometric, is recording uh, the behavior. And we do this uh, through an open source recorder through which we capture um, the times needed to press and release keys. Also, um, the way that you move between the keys, uh, the way that you hold your uh, phone if you're on a mobile device, um, and how you basically interact with your device, including the mouse movements. So all sorts of... Um, of data points are collected through the open source recorder. And then the output of this is taken through data engineering so as to um, extract only the signals which are the most relevant and uh, used for creating your typing profile. We do this initially two, uh, two or three times to create um, the user's typing profile. This is very similar to what you do when you have a new phone and you need to configure your fingerprint scanner. So you do it in the beginning a couple of more times until the system literally creates your profile. And after that, every time you come back, we compare the typing profile to what we have stored as your typing profile. And um, if the, the, the matching is above a certain threshold, then we say, okay, yes, we allow the authentication. So it's a success. If it's not, then we say, okay, um, probably this is not the person who he or she claims to be. Right, so enough theory. <laughs> Let's see how this would work in practice. I'll just switch now to, to the Typing DNA website and show you a bit of an already done widget that you can super easily implement. Um, and this is for demo purposes. So you also work, see how it would work. And then I'll show you how you could um, alternatively use the authentication API so you make your own custom implementation. So, right, we are on the typingdna.com website. What you need to do firstly is cre uh, create an account. So you sign up, all of our accounts are for free. <laughs> so you don't need to pay for any of the solutions. And after you sign up, you're going to be redirected uh, to the dashboard where you can find your information also from um, the Verify uh, product, which is the already made widget I'm going to show you in a moment, but as well for the authentication API. But let's start with the demo. Let's see how this would actually work. Uh, from here, you can uh, do the verified demo here. I already opened it. Um, so to begin with, we need to create, as I was mentioning, the user's typing profile. And we also need a root of trust to see if um, basically to have a data point that would associate the typing profile with the, with the, the person. Um, and we need to make sure that this person is indeed uh, the one that uh, provided the phone number or the email address if they have it. So I'll just go for um, email and I'll write here a dummy email. Address. I'm going to do this for the first time so you can see the flow end to end. So I input my email uh, to have a, like a data point that this is indeed um, 
this is basically the only contact PII information that we have over you. Um, and it can also be used as a fallback method in case something goes terribly wrong and let's say you temporarily break your arm or something happens, then you can opt for the fallback method um, and you receive, uh, you, you are still able to access your 2FA. Right, so I'll just start a demo now. And I need to write these words. As you can see, the number of uh, words or characters is not... Uh, so high, so the user experience is good. And here on the on the right side, this thing shows that the typing pattern has been recording while it typed. Now, because this is the first time I do it, I need to create my typing profile. So this time only, I need to type two more times. And one more. All right, now I, I will receive, again, one time only, um, a security code. I'll just copy paste it. Right. So my typing uh, profile has been created, and it was the same as uh, the one that I inputted the first time. So um, how can I say that the second and third uh, type uh, profile, like behaviors, typing um, behaviors, were similar to the first that I, the one that I did first. But let's start this over. So now I have my typing profile created and I'll try to authenticate. I'll start again. I'll use the same email address so it knows uh, which typing profile to access and I'll start it. Right, and that's it. The verification has been successful and I was allowed into my account. So see, as easy as typing four small words and you already have your 2FA in place. So if this uh, made you curious enough to want to give it a more of a deep dive uh, try, I'll show you now how you can implement it with the, um, how you can test out basically with the authentication API um, that we have available. So uh, I'm, I'm going to use Postman for that. Um, the first step here is to to go to your basically is to go to the typing dna page go here and access the like download the post one library collection it's very easy to to get it from here and import it into your postman account i already have it imported here now after it's imported you need to add your credentials so you go back to the dashboard you switch to the authentication api tab and you take your key and your secret from here. Uh, you go into the configurations, basic auth, and put your username and password. This is for us to know that it was you try, uh, accessing the API. Now, next, we're going to use the auto endpoint. This is basically a magical endpoint that does everything for you. So uh, it will firstly, the first three times, enroll the typing pattern. So an enrollment means adding for the to the typing profile of the person to create the um, the profile itself uh, also every time we have a qualitative um, typing pattern we add it to the to the typing profile so it's kept up to date this is also part of the enrollment and the auto endpoint also does all the verifications so here you can see multiple endpoints but basically auto is the one that you can use for almost all the use cases that you have unless you want to to make it a very custom implementation case which you can use this other two right so we have let's say the back end configured now with postman now it, you might want be wondering all right but where can i get a typing profile so can i can start testing and we have that figured out as well so if you go on the typingdna.com website under authentication api we have created this typing pattern viewer which is basically a tool that um, outputs the typing patterns after you write in the text box here. So I'm going to use this type to output tool to generate the typing patterns and then uh, verify them through Postman through the typing DNA collection. Ready? So we already have a phrase for this. I'll type it now. Make yourself necessary to somebody. We ran multiple tests and apparently this phrase is very effective um, into, into the how can I say, improving the accuracy of the verification with lowering the number of characters needed. So this is a perfect combination of a short text but good accuracy in detection. And it generated the typing patterns. Here you can see three types, same text, any text, and extended. The difference between them. So with the same text, 
This means that every time you're trying to perform authentication, so create the, the typing profile of the user and uh, verify it, like authenticate based on it, you must use the same text, identical same text every, every time. Now with any text, uh, we allow you to write or the users to write anything that they might think of. However, we require a higher number of characters here. So same text works better with short, uh, but identical text every time, whereas any text is more flexible, but it requires the user to write more. Then it's up to you how you decide to do the implementation. But uh, for the sake of the exercise, we'll go for the same text. So we're going to use this phrase um, to create the typing profile and then authenticate based on it. Right, so now I'm just going to copy this. Copy, go into my auto. I'm going to create a new user here. Uh, so this is sending basically the user ID. Please make sure this is an ID that you're sending if you're going to implement it, not some type of a PII, we don't want that. And we just copy paste here the typing pattern that we were generated before. I'll hit send and the message came back. So, right, it seems I used this uh, user before. Um, and if I were to check for it, let's see how many typing patterns did I have on it. So the thing is I used the same user ID before. We already have a typing pattern uh, uh, pattern profile basically for it and now we just did the authentication not from the beginning so for just the sake of this i'll just use uh, let's do it like this for sure this one i didn't do i'll go back and do it again as you can see many mistakes <laughs> but no worries there i copy this i go back and the reason why I didn't ha hit the send with the user ID is because no typing pattern, no two typing patterns are identical, not even for the same user. So if, we, if I would have tried to send the same typing pattern as before, um, then I would have gotten an error back saying this might be a, a fraud attempt or like an attack. So that's why I, try, I prefer to generate a new one. Then I'm going to send now under this new user ID. And it says the pattern was enrolled, uh, but they're not enough for verification. So I just enrolled it. The action done was enrolled. I need to do this two more times in order to create the profile, right? So going back here, reset, writing the exact same text. Get this, copy, paste and send. Again, not enough for verification. I just enrolled it. Now I should have two. And one last time. I get this, I copy back here. I send it over, right, the third time I enroll it. Now, if I go into the check user, I'll just copy the user ID from here. Check user is going to show me how many um, typing patterns I have for this user. And it says I have a count of three, which is good, means my profile is complete and I can proceed with authentication and verification. But all of them are on desktop. So desktop and mobile are different be because the physical keyboards behave differently than the mobile ones. So this is why if you uh, want to verify from the mobile device, make sure the mobile um, profile was created previously or you ask the user to create it then. Right. So with this count of three, I'm going back to auto and now my profile is created, I'll try to do the verification. Going back, I reset it, write the exam, same text. I get it. And the message came back, it's done. And what it said is, um, first of all, we did the verification. And it was successful because the result was one. And then because we believe this uh, typing pattern to, um, to have a high quality, then we also add it to the typing profile of the person. So enroll. So we did the verification with the result of one, which meant authentication successful and enrollment with the result of one, meaning we also add it to the profile. Now I, I asked a colleague of mine to generate a typing profile before, before this talk on the exact same text that we used just to show you what would happen if, if somebody would use um, would try to break in into your account by the typing behavior. So I already have an, a typing profile previously generated. I will just copy paste it from here and see what happens. 
All right, so the action done of it was verification and the result was zero, meaning uh, the authentication was not successful. We don't believe this person to be who they claim to be. And because of this, we also didn't do any enrollment because obviously the typing pattern does not belong to the person. So we don't want to add it to the typing profile. Pretty interesting, right? Uh, I really encourage you after the talk to go and play a bit around with it and try to test it out with different uh, friends or families and see how it works with your own, with your own eyes. Now, going, uh, going back to the presentation, uh, I know this uh, talk was uh, on security and it's on the security stage, uh, but there's also one field which is worth mentioning in the typing biometric space, uh, which is the e-health. So there are currently various uh, startups and companies um, around the globe which are investigating and researching into how you can apply typing biometrics for um, e-health purposes to detect various diseases associated uh, mostly with your, um, your brain and how you can uh, detect it um, and also help you throughout, um, let's say, improving your state. So constantly monitoring and taking action on the on the findings. The results are quite uh, promising and I'm looking forward to see where this will go in the future. Uh, imagine um, you would have an e-health app that uh, based on the way that you constantly type on your phone or on your, on your uh, computer would say you might be at risk of having this disease. Maybe you should get yourself checked or if you have the disease, all right, your threshold now or your behavior indicated uh, a progress or maybe that your state um, is just uh, went worse over the past one month or, or so on. So a lot of potential here. I'm looking forward to see these companies um, evolve over the time. But we at Typing Unique could also not stay away from the e-health area because it has so much potential and uh, room for growth and for helping people. So we very recently launched Focus, uh, which is an app for improving your productivity. So basically, um, we monitor, or we, we track uh, how you type, and then we can predict your mood based on that and give you some recommendation on when you should take a break or when, um, when you're the most focused. And all of this with the purpose of improving your personal productivity. So this app is also available for free now. Just go on typingunit.com slash focus, check it out and let us know what you think and if it helped you. Well, at, uh, at Typing DNA, we are on a constant mission of improving people's lives through typing biometrics. We believe this field to have great potential and we keep on exploring um, over it. And I hope to have made you curious enough to want to explore it further and test it out. And if it, this presentation was not enough, I, we also created this special landing page for the event, uh, typingdna.com slash conf42. Uh, here we're going to find the uh, demos, contests, challenges, more information about what uh, we discussed today. Um, and with every contest that you're participating in, you're closer to winning some limited edition cool swag. So get on this landing page, have fun and get a chance of winning some, some cool stuff. We are always available for questions, so don't hesitate to write to us. Um, and I want to thank you for your attention and leave you with the final thought. So as Picard uh, rightfully said, uh, things are only impossible until they're not. And typing biometrics is the perfect example for that.